Ahoy, you scurvy dog. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Are you ready for adventure? Good, because I'm going to teach you how to be a smart, capable pirate. Now, the very first thing that you're going to want to do is save up 250k gold to become a captain and have your own captain ship. So why don't you head on over to the Sovereign's Tent so I can explain why you want that. No, not that. That's not the Sovereign's Tent. The Sovereign's Tent is this big tent in the back of most outposts. Oh my gosh. Okay, no, not there. No, 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 not there either. All right, look for the big, yes, the tower. That's it. Go there. Yes, that's the Sovereign's Tent. And I'm going to explain to you why you want to get a captain boat. Now, the Sovereigns were added in Season 7 of Sea of Thieves. The deal, though, is these guys only work with captains. So you got to get yourself a captain boat. And to do that, you need 250k gold. Now, the reason you want to be able to sell to the Sovereigns is they take all of the treasure off your hands in one place, making it very easy to sell treasure. So the question is, are you ready to make some gold? Good, because the first thing you're going to do is you're actually going to leave the game and go to the maiden voyage because there's a quick and easy way to make some gold there. Back in the main menu, you're going to select maiden voyage and set sail. Then once you get there, you're going to meet the Pirate Lord. Now there is a lot of lore in Sea of Thieves, which is pretty fantastic. There is another content creator that I'm going to recommend you watch. His name's Captain Falcor. He covers all of the things that you need to know about Sea of Thieves and continually makes videos about new lore that is coming into the game. So if you're a story driven pirate, which we all are, this will be a great channel for you guys to check out and subscribe. Now, you don't need to listen to the pirate lord here. You can literally turn around and start running to go get your goal. The first thing you're going to do is going to go to the very top of this little area into a pond and you're going to grab the key. I'm going to show you exactly where that is. You can find the key right here in the pool. Boom. The key. Now pick the key up and you're going to head back to the hole of the ship and get some easy gold. Perfect. Now pick up the free gold just laying around. And once you're done with that, head on back over to me at your ship and we're going to set sail on adventure. Now you scurvy dog that we're back on the ship, let's cover some of the basics of your ship so you can kind of understand what you need to do. Here is your anchor. This is where you lower and raise your anchor. To the left of the anchor, we have the helm. And this is where we steer the ship, obviously, because it is the wheel. Next, let's talk about sails. You have two ropes for the sails. The rope closest to you will raise and lower your sails, letting you go forward or coming to a stop. And then the other sail that we have is the angle. This is used to catch wind when you are setting sail so you can go faster with the wind. Now that we've covered the sails, let's talk about one of the more fun things on the boat. Yes the cannons now you will need some cannonballs so head on over to the cannonball barrel and grab yourself some cannonballs now that we have some cannonballs go ahead and jump back on the cannon and give that thing a spin now cannons are a lot of fun and they do take a lot of skill to get good at them but for the basic sense of the matter it is a blast to shoot quite literally a blast now, don't have too much fun because you don't want to use all your cannonballs. Next, we have the harpoons. These are located on the front of your ship. This can be used to grab loot out of the water. It can also be used to hit uh, like land and rocks to help you turn faster. They are very useful. We'll get more advanced in that later. In the back of the ship, you have the ammo crate and, of course, the armory crate. And this is where you would select any types of weapons that you might want on your person. 
Now, the blunderbuss is don't hey, watch where you're aiming that. Don't you don't you do it. Don't you shoot that thing at me. Okay. Now watch where Oh, hey, watch where you're shooting that thing. Hey, I'm going to need you to put that back and grab yourself a flintlock. All right, good. Now that you got your flintlock, go to the bottom of your ship and let's cover the last of the barrels there. This is where you're going to find everything that you need in your ship from the water barrel. In case your ship gets on fire, you're going to need water to put it out. You also have the food barrels down here. And of course, you have the wood barrels. You also have access to all of the equipment chests that you would need to change out your pirate look, get a pet from the pet chest, or switch out your tools. You also have the ability to cook food down here and get grog. Yes, there is grog in the bottom of your ship. Use it wisely. Now that we've covered the basics of your ship, let's raise the anchor. We are going to drop the sails and we are going to get moving. In Sea of Thieves, there is a lot to do, and I really don't want to overwhelm you. Remember, our goal, Pirate, is to get yourself a captain boat. So to do that, we need 250k gold, and we are going to focus on a couple of things. Hey, hey, are you listening? Li yes, yes, yes. When you're centered up, the helm does make a noise. Now, are you ready to focus? Okay, all right. First, we're going to focus on a couple of things. There are a few events in the Sea of Thieves that I want you as a new player to kind of keep your eye on. The number one thing is going to be sea forts and treasuries. So there are six sea forts located throughout the Sea of Thieves. You can find them here. These are going to be PVE on demand events. They were added, I believe, in season six of Sea of Thieves. These are great spots for new players to go get not only some easy gold and easy treasure, but also get some free supplies. And these are some of the best places to get supplies. So once you kind of have the location marked, one of the tips I want to give you is you can actually see the map table from above on the sloop. So if you're kind of confused on where you go, just zoom out on the map and you can kind of lean over the rail to keep an eye on where you're going. So let's talk about sea forts and go there first. Sea forts are pretty easy to spot as you approach them. They glow with this kind of ominous glow because it is haunted by phantoms. That's right, I said phantoms. You're gonna wanna aim your ship right at them and keep your head down as they will shoot cannonballs at you. Now, some people believe that they are not very good at shooting you, but let's be honest, I think we've all been there once before where something unbelievable happens and you get shot in the face with a cannonball now that you're new let's not let that happen on your first go at a sea fort so just be a little bit careful on your approach now as you approach i want you to look for that gate yes that gate right there on the left park your boat next to there because we're going to get the treasure from there a little bit later great job you're doing so good pirate okay parking in the right spot doing all the right things you raised your sails to slow your boat down and now you have a welcome party with the phantoms so make sure to shoot those guys and you are in business perfect now that you've cleaned out the welcoming party Go ahead and jump on over there and get to work. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm... Yes. Okay, you can drop your anchor, but make sure to pick the anchor back up because you do not want to leave your boat in a position that it can't just easily drop the sails and get moving again. So, yeah, make sure to bring up your sails all the way. And if you do drop the anchor, make sure to pick that anchor back up. Now that we have done that, let's head on over. And one of the cool things about sea forts is they are great places to get food now there is food that is better than others and i will quickly show you a chart on what food is best but pineapples and mangoes are going to be the things that you look for the most now let's get on in there and kill some phantoms so phantoms are pretty easy to kill it just takes three swipes of your swords to bring them down or if you have a flintlock and i reach they will die with one shot or if you're up close to the blunderbuss you can just blow them to smithereens yes good job yeah yes i'm very proud of you yeah okay all right stop celebrating there's another round yeah they're behind you now get your sword out okay all right you're doing good hey protect me hey hey make oh can you protect me oh okay all right listen i'm gonna let this slide because this is your first time but next time 
trying to let, let the cameraman die, please. Okay. All right. I'm glad you like that pineapple. All right. Eventually, after a few waves, you are going to get to the the captain here at the seafort. And once you kill him, he is going to drop a key. Hey, I'm dying again, per sir. Yeah, there's the captain. Okay. Please kill the captain. Don't let the cameraman die. Stop it. Thank you for... Oh, oh I'm, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Okay. All right. I'm alive still. All right. Good job. Now kill these phantoms. And then once you kill the captain, he is going to drop a key. And you're going to want to get that key because that's going to open the, the C4 vault. Oh, okay. All right. Can you res me, please? All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Try not to let the cameraman die. Okay. Now, now kill the captain. Perfect. And he will drop a key. Pick that key up, and you're going to head to the bottom of the sea fort to open the treasure vault. That is going to have some treasure for you. Y yes, you did it. I'm very proud. Yeah, I'm very proud of you. Okay. <laughs> oh, there we go. Perfect. Now, head to the bottom with the key, open the treasure vault, and you will be in business. Now, sometimes there is going to be treasure that is different than a standard treasure vault. For example, right now, it looks like someone was trying to do something called a raid voyage for the Order of Souls, and it changed the loot of this uh, of this sea fort, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. You want treasure, you want gold, so let's not complain. Now, one of the cool things is you can use these treasure chests to kind of collect smaller items and put three of them inside of it to make it moving faster, kind of moving the treasure around the c4 quickly so yes once you get that loaded up you're going to take it over to this little platform and drop the treasure on it and i want to show you why you're going to want to do that this is also why we parked the boat where we parked the boat eventually once you move all the treasure there you're going to use these levers and these pulleys to move the treasure in a spot that you can harpoon it onto your boat quite easily and last but not least don't forget to lower the gate excellent now that you've lowered the gate gotten all the treasure you are ready to go go to your ship harpoon it all onto your boat and get to the nearest outpost because you're going to want to sell this treasure as quickly as possible one good rule of thumb for new players is to not stack loot sell often as quickly as you can that way you're not losing your treasure because pvp does happen in this game another thing that i want you to focus on on your adventures is called treasuries these are fantastic for new players get you a bunch of gold and are relatively easy to accomplish now there are three located within the sea of thieves there's one located in the top left one located in the top middle and one located under an island called reaper's hideout so that's a little bit to the south right here now, the reason we're going to have you focused on treasuries is these can net you probably around 30 to 40K worth of treasure, and they are very easy to do for new players. So, are you ready to set out on an adventure? Good. Now, go get your anchor up, drop your sails, and let's go. Now, there is a lot of information that you will need to have to be successful in the Sea of Thieves, and I am going to get to every single one of those. I just don't want to overwhelm you. So we are going to focus on our first goal, and that is getting the captain to ship because that will make everything else that you do on the seas that much easier. Utilizing your map, locate your treasury, and once you see those aurora type of lights coming from the seas that's to signal that you are approaching the treasury i'm going to want you to pull up your sails drop your anchor and then once you're completely not moving raise your anchor with your sails completely up just in case so you're ready to go at a moment's notice and the reason you want to be ready to go at a moment's notice is because sea of thieves is a pvp ve world it's a shared world adventure game meaning at any given point pirates can come plunder your treasure and that is going to be the biggest challenge that you will ever face in this game and is also one of the most fun parts about the game 
do your best to check to see if there's any ships in the horizon and if there is none jump into the water and swim straight down each treasury is different and unique and the entrance is also a little bit different but one of the cool things that rare has done is they've made it kind of obvious where the entrance is there are just more underwater sea elements so once you kind of find what might be the entrance swim there Keep an eye out for this little bubble looking thing. Give it a little shot and it'll open up the door and allow you into the treasury. And this is going to be where you are going to make probably some of the easiest gold in the seas. Now, it's not necessarily without risk, but I'm going to explain a little bit on why this is probably an easier way for you to go about it in the Sea of Thieves, especially if you're new. So you're going to grab yourself a trident, open the next door, and here in this chamber you are going to do quite a few ways of fighting what we call the ocean crawlers now there are tridents all throughout this treasury or all throughout this chamber and you're going to use this trident to kill all of this pve it will make it significantly easier now there is a full guide video that i do have that will explain everything that you need to know about how to use the trident and what they can be used for. And I will link that in the comments below. Now, that being said though, you scurvy dog, give it your best go. You will probably die a few times and that's okay. There will be barrels all throughout. So if you need any food, make sure to grab them from the barrels and just go to town, grab those tridents, eventually what you will have in the PVE is the boss will spawn or they are called the treasury vault master once you kill them it will open the door and inside is some of the greatest treasure that you can get your hands on especially for new players so make sure you use the tridents kill the boss and open that door Now, I do want to say again, the treasury is a great way to earn a lot of gold because as you can see in the vault room, there is a lot of treasure. Now, that doesn't mean that this doesn't come with some risk. So depending on how long it took you to do the treasury, there could be some pirates waiting for you back on your ship. But this is kind of where the benefit is for you as a new player because one of the mechanics that are in the game are these mermaid statues and you can actually store your treasure inside of the mermaid statue and once you store it in there you are the only person that can take it out it's also used as a quick way to transfer treasury from the treasure vault all the way to your boat at the surface so just move all of the treasure into the statue and once you're done you can actually use the mermaid to go back to your ship as well i do want to say this is probably the riskiest part of any treasury you have no idea what's up on your boat so when you do get back to your boat do a quick check for any pirates or boats in the horizon now there is a big art form in understanding the seas and understanding what to look for but the best that i can explain it to you for now is just keep an eye for any other looking boats out there so always watch the horizon especially after the treasury i'm going to show you a few spots that you can swipe your sword and if there's any tuckers people that like to hide on your boat they are going to be some of the common spots around the helm make sure to check the the cannon areas pretty thoroughly there's also the crow's nest up top and in one of the things that you can look for is something called a reaper which is a marked boat on the map so if you don't see any of that even down below in your ship you're probably okay and if you feel like you're okay then turn your boat in such a way that you can harpoon the treasure that you will collect from the mermaid jump off go to the mermaid that is there with the smoke and it will say collect treasure then all of the treasure that you stored in it from down below in the treasury will spawn go back to your boat 
use the harpoon harpoon all of that beautiful treasure onto your ship and then you're going to want to use the map to find the nearest outpost because now your ship has a bunch of treasure and you my friend are going to want to sell that as quickly as possible unfortunately you can't use the sovereigns that will make that much easier but that's what we're working towards so go check the map find the closest outpost drop the sails and head there I will also show you kind of an easier way to park the boat to kind of make it easy to sell the treasure. Now, it might look a little crazy, but we've been doing this for a long time in the Sea of Thieves. You're going to want to aim your boat in such a way that puts the bowsprit, which is the very front of your ship, over the dock. Once you've kind of just jammed the ship in there, you're going to drop the sails to full sails and drop the anchor. Now, I know this looks crazy. It'll just keep your boat kind of in one spot and keep the bowsprit over, making it even faster to sell treasure. Now, if there's any holes that happen in this process, go down below, repair the hole, and start selling that treasure. Each treasury will net you around 30 to maybe even 50,000 gold, which means if you do about four to five, you should be at your goal of getting a captained ship now i do want to say if you do this and you get attacked or sunk in the process i don't want you to get discouraged what i'm showing you is skills to use in the high seas but one of the things that see if these has released is something called safer seas now the negative side of this is all of the treasure that you earn is at a reduced Right, so if you want to earn gold more quickly, you need to do that in the high seas. Now, there is a lot to cover, but this is kind of what I would recommend you doing on your first day in the seas. You want to get a captain boat as quickly as possible. Selling treasure to each trading company is not fun. Being able to sell it all to the sovereigns at the sovereign's tent, even utilizing some harpoons, is going to make selling treasure not only more enjoyable, but make it a lot faster for you, meaning you can get back out there on the seas and make more gold. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Really helps me when you do that. And I'm going to make a whole series in this style where I'm going to take it slow, take it one goal at a time, and teach you all of the things that you need to know in Sea of Thieves to be a smart, capable pirate. So, Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new guides.